Coming up on District Wire News, the Libyan military is declaring a ceasefire after coalition forces begin airstrikes. We have the full report ahead on the latest in North Africa. And later, track work on the red, blue and orange lines are causing delays for Metro Rail riders. We've got a live report straight ahead. District Wire News starts now. Good evening, I'm Kelsey Edgerly. And I'm Idia Asian. More explosions followed by anti-aircraft fire are being reported in Libya. This weekend, the United States and coalition partners launched an air-based military operation while the Libyan military has called for an immediate ceasefire. CNN's Barbara Hall has the story. These dramatic the sheer... images from eastern Libya show the sheer power of coalition airstrikes. Rebels seeking to overthrow the regime of Muammar Gaddafi say the target was a government convoy that was moving on their stronghold of Benghazi. The United States, Britain, France and others began Operation Odyssey Dawn on Saturday, saying Gaddafi was not honoring a UN-mandated no-fly zone over Libyan skies. The Pentagon says coalition forces are enforcing the order and now rule the air. One eyewitness says that while the missile and bomb attacks from U.S. and allied military forces are intimidating... We're scared what would be the domestic reactions toward uh, the, those strikes. Fears perhaps not unfounded. On Sunday, Gaddafi blasted the United States and its coalition partners, calling them Nazis and terrorists, and saying a long war lies ahead. Even if we like martyrdom, well, we tell you we will not die, you will die. The regime says dozens of Libyans have been killed, mostly civilians. The Pentagon says precautions are being taken to avoid non-military areas and says it has seen no reports of, quote, significant civilian casualties. I'm Barbara Hall reporting from Atlanta. Four American New York Times reporters are now free after being held for six days by the Libyan military. The journalists Anthony Shadid, Tyler Hicks, Lindsay Adario and Stephen Farrow were captured on March 15th in the Libyan city of Ajabia while covering the conflict between the government forces and rebels. The Libyan government says the reporters didn't have visas. They should be flying back to the U.S. today. Confrontations and protests in Syria erupted on Friday after security forces killed five protesters in a southern Syrian city. On Sunday, police fired live ammunition and tear gas at thousands of Syrians protesting in Daraa for a third consecutive day, killing one person. Enraged protesters set fire to several government buildings, signaling that unrest is spreading across the Arab world. More than 200 people were treated for tear gas inhalation at a nearby mosque that has been transformed into a field hospital. Japanese officials are trying to prevent a nuclear meltdown in the aftermath of the devastating tsunami. Cooling systems failed at yet another nuclear reactor on Sunday. The threat of exposure to radiation has caused nearly 200,000 people to evacuate the area. Now there are concerns that some foods are not safe. CNN's Martin Savage has more. On this small Japanese farm, we find more than spinach in the fields. When I bring it close to, to the, the spinach, you can see it, it dramatically goes up. We're about 100 miles away from the damaged nuclear facility in Fukushima, and we just picked this farmer's field at random to check. What we found surprised even our expert. The radiation levels here are twice the background levels that you normally should find. We detected similarly abnormal readings in a second field, and while our samples are not enough to be conclusive, our tests could support what the Japanese government already knows. Radiation from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear complex has entered the food chain. Uh, there was a uh, sample of uh, original uh, milk uh, from um, uh, one farm. There was a finding uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, the value uh, that was uh, uh, obtained from the sample uh, went beyond uh, the, uh, the level uh, under the food uh, sanitation law. And not just milk. Spinach from fields up to 75 miles from the damaged nuclear plant also tested higher for radiation. While the levels, including the ones we found, are far below any health threat, officials have begun banning the sale of foods grown near the plant, shutting down some of Japan's most fertile farmland. 
Europe saw something like this 25 years ago when the radioactive cloud from Chernobyl contaminated large swaths of Eastern Europe and Scandinavia, forcing the destruction of tons of food. Satoshi Takaya remembers those days. He was on the team of Japanese scientists working to prevent contaminated food from entering his country. Fukushima Daiichi, he says, is no Chernobyl, not even close, but... Japanese or anyone for that matter won't need anything they think could possibly be contaminated. So of course, this will have an economic impact on farmers. And the impact could be great because fear is spreading farther than radiation. Up until now, I thought everything was fine, but to hear that some radiation has been found here, that's pretty upsetting. For the first time in her life, 82-year-old Yukia Yuchida is afraid of the land that has been in her husband's family for generations. Martin Savage, CNN, Chiba, Japan. With all the tragedy in Japan and the cleanup, it's hard to even think about a Japanese celebration. But next week, the National Cherry Blossom Festival begins. It's a yearly celebration of Japanese culture. But after the devastating earthquake in Japan, this year's celebration will have a much different tone. Darren Diolio has more details. In the wake of the disaster in Japan, cherry blossom season in D.C. has taken a more somber and heartfelt tone. The usually vibrant Cherry Blossom Festival celebrates springtime and Japanese-American friendship. Though the Japanese embassy gave its blessing for this year's celebration, many organizers and participants are finding it difficult to celebrate. The festival officially starts on Saturday, but we know that we just don't want to jump right into the festival like nothing happened. Two groups have already withdrawn from participating in the street festival. Japan's National Tourism Board and Michinoko Kai, a local group that celebrates the culture of the Tohoku region, which was struck by the earthquake and tsunami. Festival officials say both the Cherry Blossom Festival and Sakura Matsuri organizers are being very cautious about this year's programming. We want to make sure that we're being respectful and sensitive to what's happened in the tone of what we, the words that we use, the advertising that's on the TV, etc. Mallet believes that this year's festival is the most effective way for Americans to provide aid and show support for Japan. Americans and Japanese grieve in different ways, and I think with Americans, when a great tragedy strikes or something bad happens to someone, we try to connect and get closer to them. So I think that at our festival, at the Sakura Matsuri, there are going to be a lot of Americans there because they want to be closer to Japan, they want to feel connected. The Cherry Blossom Festival runs from March 26th through April 10th. For District Wire News, I'm Darian Diolio. More than 100 people were arrested in front of the White House Saturday after gathering for an anti-war protest on the 8th anniversary of the Iraq War. About 1,000 people from various anti-war groups marched around Lafayette Park to make demands of the Obama administration, stop the war, and expose the lies. 113 people were arrested at Saturday's la rally on charges of disobeying an official order. The arrests were made after protesters handcuffed themselves to the White House fence. Montgomery County police are still looking for a motive in the Lululemon murder case. Victim-turned-suspect Brittany Norwood is expected in court today, where she could reveal more information about the murder of her co-worker, Jana Murray. Norwood was arrested, and charged, was arrested and charged with murder after her story didn't match up with physical evidence that was found on scene. Norwood claimed she and Murray were attacked, beaten, and sexually assaulted by two masked men. Police determined that Norwood's injuries were self-inflicted, and there was no medical evidence of rape. No big surprise to people who live in the district. Some huge delays on the metro because of technical problems and track mishaps. Russ Schubert joins us live with more on problems facing Metro riders. Russ, what's going on with the Metro? Thanks, Didia. I went underground today to see how bad the Metro delays really are and to talk to riders about how they are affected. The past week, there have been major delays on the blue, orange, and red lines of the Metro. Metro Rail being the main transportation source for Washingtonians, it has caused many problems for commuters. 
As of this morning, the red, blue, and orange lines were running on one track, escalators and elevators were out at the Wheaton station, and there was a major backup where all three lines met at Metro Station due to track problems at Federal Triangle. Riders wait upwards of 20 minutes for their trains at the tracks, and the longer they wait, the more upset they get. I think it just makes it really hard to, to plan and schedule things. Um, I generally take it to work and I would say probably eight times out of ten there's some kind of delay. While sometimes delays are to be expected, I think it's kind of excessive and it definitely causes a lot of frustration in terms of trying to get the places on time and kind of go about a regular routine. The delay has larger effects for people with disabilities who rely on the metro system to travel. I use the Metro a lot when, I, when I'm going to practice, play basketball, or going to the Wizards game, or going to the college basketball, like the UConn. I just went to the UConn game and UConn won. Overfilled trains cause disabled people to not be able to board and cause them even more delays as they are forced to call shuttle service. Lisa Farbstein, a Metro spokeswoman, said that the Metro is working on the problem, but they do not know how long the problems will last. Over the past couple of years, fares have gone up, but service hasn't. And I feel like in other businesses, that's not acceptable. And I think um, how they handle general complaints and feedback is not really acceptable um, when you compare it to how other businesses or organizations react. So it, it's definitely a source of frustration. And it, you can see it all around you when you ride the Metro. Um, so I don't know what it's going to take to fix, but there are definitely a lot of things broken. Riders are getting increasingly frustrated, and Metro still won't give a date when riders can expect the delays to stop. Until then, riders can expect to add 20 to 30 minutes to their travel times. Idia, back to you. Thanks, Ross. Metro is beginning an initiative to encourage riders to ride bicycles to Metro stations. Metro says the initiative would save money by building bike cages instead of much more expensive parking spaces. Less than 1% of the Metro Rail riders ride their bikes to stations. Metro wants to increase that number by five times. Coming up after the break, AT&T buys T-Mobile. We'll have more on this merger and we'll tell you what it could mean for your cell phone service and your wallet. And why some businesses at American University will no longer take credit and debit cards. We'll have more after the break.